of me. Uh, I believe you are hearing me, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are. Okay. Um, my background uh, is not. Uh, my background is not in mass communication. My background is in construction, technology, and management. I've also had further training in public procurement. So that's where I work primarily. Uh, but somehow I've also been in um, the media for quite a while. While I was in school, I used to write spots for a newspaper in Jos. That's the standard of Jos. Um, the standard newspaper. Anybody that has been in Jos will know the standard newspaper. Uh, so that's why uh, I wrote spots for them almost on a daily basis. Somehow I was able to juggle between schoolwork and um, writing for them. Uh, most especially I was covering all the foreign sports and, and all that for them then. My tool for working then was uh, the foreign radios because satellite TV was at a premium. There was little uh, or no satellite TV. Then I'm talking of um, the mid nineties. Um, and uh, when I was doing my industrial attachment, my office where I did the industrial attachment was just opposite the standard newspaper in, in just then. So it was always easy for me to connect uh, sort of uh, back in the day. So then I used to have um, some appearances on um, TV, Plateau, uh, tel radio and television, PLTV, as they were called in those days. Um, so, so I got a lot of background. And as a matter of fact, when I finished from university, the first place where I worked was um, a production company um, here in Akure. They call it concepts and actualities. Uh, then uh, the first thing I helped the man who owned the office to do was to um, was to help edit two books. So I helped him edit two books. And perhaps maybe I need to also say that I've had some little bit of interest in reading right from a youthful age, thanks to my father then who purchased a lot of encyclopedias <laughs> uh, back in the day then. And, um, you know, it afforded me the opportunity of reading a lot. Apart from encyclopedia, he used to buy two newspapers in those days. He used to buy um, the Tribune and, 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 Dil and Daily Sketch. That's my father used to do that uh, in those days. So every day I used to read the newspaper. It was a very big privilege for me. We don't do that these days because papers are online now. Uh, and uh, you know, papers don't sell as much as they do in those days because uh, people read most newspapers online. And then there were some neighbors that we had. Um, the man of the house to there used to buy newspaper. He used to buy two newspapers every day. He used to buy daily sketch and daily times. So I, um, I already read daily sketch in our house. So I would go to their house and read daily times. Anytime I didn't go to their house to read daily times, the man would bring daily times to our house. That he didn't see me today to come and read daily times. So he brought daily times. And um, when I was in secondary school, if my, my father gave me some amount of money, um, I when my friend, the same thing like my friend, my friend too, their fathers used to give them money, but they used to spend their money to, to record music. Um, my interest was not in music. I had little or no interest in music, but I used to buy Vanguard newspapers then with my money, I bought Vanguard newspaper. I bought Super Story by Wally Adenuga regularly. I bought all the publications uh, from Sonny Obazo Diagbasi, who just passed away recently. Uh, stock of Sports Souvenir, Complete Football, International Soccer Review. 
I used to buy all those sports mirror with my money. That was what I used my money for. As a matter of fact, if you get to my house, you'll probably see, see some copies. If I'm able to um, dig deep, I used to buy Focus on Africa magazine. It's a BBC production then. Focus on Africa magazine. I enjoyed all those reading. So it helped me to build um, a very strong background in, in reading uh, in those days. So that was what I basically used. And also maybe because I had a love for current affairs um, in those days. So all those things helped me a lot. It will also interest you to know that I've been on the hot seats on um, who wants to be a millionaire uh, before uh, with Frank Hedoho. So, you know, the, the, the background that I had um, in those things helped me um, largely to be able to function in those areas. So it's been uh, an interesting trying to uh, travel, trying to juggle between my uh, construction major and also uh, my media experiences. So that's why I'm able to talk about media, communication, journalism, broadcasting from the point of view of somebody who uh, is not a primary professional in the industry. Uh, I hope you are here hearing me, everybody. Yes, sir, Hello? we can hear you. Okay, okay. I just, I'll be doing, asking regularly so that I know that I'm not alone here. So, um, you know, in, in medical practice, um, patients will be able to talk about hospitals. They'll be able to talk about doctors. They will be able to make judgments. They will be able to have preferences um, about what is happening in the medical practice. So that is the way I'm also able to talk about what is happening in the media. There are probably people I want to listen to. There are probably people I want to read from based on my own preferences, based on my own judgment. And I'm going to speak Uh, hello, sir. It seems our lecturer just left us. I'll try. I'll try to get um him back. I suspect it could be a network issue, so you may need to confirm. Yes, yes. Let me just confirm. Asha, can you, would you kindly uh, turn off your video, Mr. Asha? Okay. Is it turn off? Yeah, I think it's good now. And that we are you there? Is she there? Hello, and that will be are you there? Yes, 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 yes. I'm here. I'm here. Mm -hmm. Um, class captain, Mr. Alisa, is your network okay? I don't think his network is fine. 
I can hear you. I'm just trying to reach the lecture on WhatsApp, so I'm not on Zoom. I can hear you. Okay. 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 Hello, um, please, uh, can someone be taking us maybe from the little that the Richard has said? We'll try to um, repeat one or two things for those who might not get this clear. So uh, it's better than keeping the class so quiet. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was almost mentioning that um, that was why I asked if Ada would be, was there. Um, personally, I did not get his, um, his brief. Or his profile, his background, while he was, while he was speaking. That would be. I don't know if you, if you got him or heard him loud and clear. Okay, I think he has joined. I'm not so sure. This I will have to confirm. Okay, okay, I'm back now. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, sir. You're welcome back. Okay, so where did we go off, please? So we went off when you were giving your profile. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. I was just talking about the fact that I'm not um, a professional media practitioner. I didn't read anything about um, mass communication or media. I am just basically in construction primarily. And then I've also um, done training overseas on public procurement, in fact, that's where I work now. But I see moonlight in um, in the media one way or the other. And this has started from my university days. And my first work was in production, even before I started to work with Tondo State Government. I helped somebody to edit two books, and then he promoted me, gave me the command of his studio. He had a private studio, so I was a studio manager and we're presenting a program on TV then. It was a business program. Uh, then I've also present, uh, produced a, a sports program on TV. I don't like presenting. I would rather do uh, production. So that was what I, I did then. And I still continue to function in some of these um, areas. And then I added that as a media practitioner, you must be able to cut for yourself a section of the um, audience. Um, there is so much competition out there. Uh, if you look at social media, there are a lot of uh, comedians doing skits. They have following. That following is what ends them some something in the public space. So um, you must be able to perceive whether you are reaching to them whether they like what you are doing. I gave an example of uh, somebody who was a head of programs. Did you hear when I talked about him at all? Hello? Hello? Yes, sir, we can hear you, sir. Okay, did you hear when I talked about somebody who was a head of programs in our local television station here? I don't think so, sir. Okay, I said what the man does, he was a head of program. He has passed on now, sadly. Um, he was a very popular man because he knew how to get programs that people will watch. So if he was in a station, because I used to go there a lot then, and he looked at the other station, like the other station then was NTA, it was with the state TV. And it discovers, and you, uh, it's on station, according to the running order, they are showing um, a program on farming. He knew then that people are more likely to be watching the recent football match, like a Champions League match that was played this week, rather than be watching a program on farming. So he will find a way to yank off that program on farming. He will also put a recent football match because he wanted the public to listen, to watch what he is doing. And so we must be able to find a way to get feedbacks, to know what people will like. It is not what we like, but what the people will like that um, will ensure our success in this particular uh, business. So um, for 
you guys that are listening to me who are primarily interested in journalism, you must have read English language, uh, some journalism studies, mass communication, communication arts, theater arts, public relations, film production, TV production. There are even um, peculiar studies that relate to IT in the fields of media today, now. Um, but then if you don't have any backgrounds in any of this, you don't have to look down on yourself and say, okay, I can't make it in this industry. No, it, it really doesn't matter. There are too many excellent journalists out there who don't have any um, educational background in any of those courses or even. Um, take example, uh, how many of us have heard of Colin Udo? Colin Udo. Hello? Yes, sir, we have heard yes, of him. He's, uh... Yeah, we have heard of him. Okay, Colin Udo is an engineer. I mean, I'm not sure his practice is engineering in any way, but he was trained as, as an engineer from the University of Portacourt. But he's a frontline sports journalist today with ESPN. I'm also sure you have heard of Zain Hasha. Am I communicating? Uh, yes, sir, you're communicating. Uh, okay. CNN. Okay, CNN. She read um, French and Spanish before she furthered in, in journalism. And then what about Richard Quest? Yes, sir. Quest okay. means business. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. He's actually a lawyer. Quest, he, yes, he was I called am. to... I know about you said... I, I didn't hear you. Okay, very good. So he is a lawyer. He has been called to, to, to the bar in the United Kingdom, but he's not practicing law. Um, okay, there are two more people I want to mention. Uh, would you know Chukamoma? Chukamoma. Have you heard of Chukamoma before? Anybody? Yes, I think the name rings a bell. Yeah, you said? Familiar with the name. Yes, sir, I'm familiar with that name. Chukamoma. Okay. okay. Um, well, uh, you will have to be a little bit older to know Chukamoma. He's a microbiologist. And in the 80s, I got to know Chukamoma. He used to present a program on NTA um, network. I mean, to all over, uh, everybody, all over the country, he presented um, the big fight of the decades. Um, it was big boxing fights. He presented um, sports spectacular. Uh, in those days, uh, he showed a lot of basketball games, lawn tennis games. I mean, he, he, but he was a microbiologist, worked with a lot of pharmaceutical companies then. And then what about Fumi Yonda? Fumi Yonda. Yes, sir. I, You've I've, heard of, I've, I've heard of her. She presents a show, I think, on AIT or NTA then also. Okay. Do you know uh course of study? What she majored on? I'm not very sure, sir. Probably arts or so, fine arts or something. I, I'm not very sure. Okay. She actually read geography. Okay. She, re okay. Uh, she read geography uh, at the University of Ibadan. Um, so the point I'm trying to make is that if you want to succeed in the field of journalism, media, communications, or broadcasting, it's good to have an um, educational background. But if you don't, don't be deterred. I've just given you examples of five people who didn't have uh, primary education in the field of journalism, but they have more or less succeeded in that field of journalism. I mean, Fumi Yonda is a very popular figure, even at the level of United Nations uh, right now. Uh, she has gone to do work on the internet and all that. At the time, they the United Nations used uh, industry 
the, uh, she was involved with some people who climbed Mount Kilimanjaro just to create awareness for uh, against gender-based uh, violence. Now, that's it with the introductions. Any questions so far? If anyone has a question, can they please just indicate by raising their hands? So I can move on, right? Yes, sir, you can move on. Okay, so let's talk about the calling. So why do you want a career in journalism, broadcasting, uh, the media or communications? Why did you choose that career? Does anyone to want to volunteer an answer? I want to make it as uh, interactive as much as possible. If you want to say anything, just indicate by raising your hand, then I'll call you. Any, uh, why did you volunteer? I'm looking at McDonald's somewhere. McDonald's somewhere, can you hear me? Yes, okay. I can hear you, sir. I can hear you, sir. So, can so, hear you, sir. so why did you want to be a journalist? Or a yes, I can hear you very much. Why do you want to be a journalist or a broadcaster? Hello, I can't, I can't really get you because I have some network issues here. Okay, um, what about um, Anne, Nicholas? I can see you are also online. Anne, Nicholas, why do you want to be a job? Um, I want to be a journalist because I have always have passion to become one as a okay. child. Um, but it was not really what my mother especially wanted because that period, um, Syria had a serious issue. I think war, war crisis, and it led to the death of so many journalists. So that was why she condemned it. Okay. Um, she, she wanted you to be a lawyer or something like that, right? No, they, they were not too picky, but uh, that's journalism as a cost because of what really happened. It, it caused so many deaths of journalists mm. in Syria. So that was why she, she asked me not uh, to. It was okay. very, very dangerous. Uh, so God bless, God bless our parents anyway. They always want the <laughs> best. <laughs> they always want the best for us. But you know, God always knows better. Uh, Esha, Esha, I can see you raising your hand. You want to say something? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to give you the detail about why I want to be a journalist. And a journalist, oh. a journalist okay. would be work in futility because it has been strictly pure passion you know mm. there's no word exactly to explain why one really wants to like myself want to study this uh, this profession it's something that has been there in my vein long time ago as i was okay. growing up you know i just developed that 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 passion and i really want wish to be good in it okay. at the end. Very good. Uh, Wisdom, you also raised your hand. Wisdom. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Uh, I always, I've not wanted to be a journalist, actually. I wanted to just be an OEP, basically. But recently we learned that an OEP and a journalist are basically the same thing. Mm, uh, okay. So I've, I've always wanted to be the, I picked up, not always wanted to be, I picked up the passion after secondary school when I listened to Mr. Sami on the radio and I realized it's actually something I wanted to do because I, I like talking about things I enjoy doing and stuff like that. So I've always wanted to be like a voice to people and talk about things I'm passionate about on air. So it gives me like that platform. That's why I've always wanted to Okay, beautiful. McDonald, your hand is up. Yes, McDonald. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, I can hear you, sir. Yeah. Um, when I want to be a journalist, um, is because of the love of uh, letting people know and um, what I know. I have this passion uh, of teaching people and also 
I have love of uh, um, trying to uh, do more uh, and uh, uh, more research. So it has been my dream to use mm -hmm. my credible knowledge on what I know in reaching thousands and millions of people who might not have the opportunity, not the opportunity to maybe pass through the level I passed to acquire such. Because these days, um, some of us might not have uh, formal education, but um, through uh, um, media, uh, media, um, some can get it um, in a little way. So it has my passion, and that is what I dream doing. Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, all your answers are legit, um, because I actually put in my notes here that there are a million and one reasons why. Um, you want to become a journalist. Um, as I said, I've sent the notes to um, Olisa, so you can always share the screen. Um, I, I put some reasons here. The, the passion and the satisfaction. There is, you know, um, I think Anne mentioned that there is a passion for her. And the only job that will satisfy you doing uh, in this world is to be a journalist or a broadcaster. That's the only job. It doesn't matter if you make a lot of money elsewhere, but what will satisfy you is to actually be a journalist. So that's one of the reasons. And then it could also be because you have a flair for, for, for the screen or for writing. There's a natural flair um, for you when you're on screen. You like, I said something about myself. I said, I don't like presenting but I, can, I like to be on radio, for instance. I just don't like presenting. I like to write. I like to be behind the scene. But for some people, the natural flair is just there. When they are writing, they are very much at home. And so it helped them to develop um, uh, that ability, that desire to be a journalist. And then close to that is the fact that there is a talent that you have. Uh, let's take the voice, for instance. You know, um, I'm looking for somebody that I will make an example. How many of us know Pastor Adeboye? Almost all of us. OK. There, there is something about his voice. Am I right? Yes, sir. What is that thing about his voice? There's this play, this authority that comes with it. Yeah, you know, they call it the broadcaster's delight. Every broadcaster should want to have that kind of voice because it's always so clear. Um, at times, you may not even need a microphone. It's always so loud. It's always so distinct. Uh, that, that kind of voice is the kind of voice that a broadcaster should have. It might be the reason why you want to go into journalism. You know, as a matter of fact, there are some people that because of their voice, they are always asked to come and do voiceovers. Am I talking to somebody? You know, when they are doing cartoons, they want you to come and be the voice of a particular character in that cartoon. When you are running a jingle, they want you to come and be the voice, to do the voiceover uh, of that particular program. So the voice, is, is something that probably you developed as a talent. Some people can change their voice. They can make any kind of uh, sound. I used to think that this guy who was in um, this movie, Police Academy, the series, how many of us have watched Police Academy? How many of us have watched Police Academy before? It's up to part seven. Are you with me? Yes, I'm with yes, you. Uh, are we have, I've heard watched, about I've heard about it, but I've not really okay. watched it. I, I know Police Academy, but I've not started watching okay. it. There's a guy, there's a character in that police academy. His real name is Michael Winslow. He can make any sound <laughs> with his mouth, any kind of sound. You know, I used to think it was just a creation of the movie. But in actual fact, the guy was on um, America's Got Talent recently, using that voice to do all those stuff that he normally did. So if you have a talent, a particular 
talent that is related to broadcasting, to journalism, you know, it could be a reason. The way you use your voice. I mentioned somebody earlier on, that's Richard Quest. What's, what does his voice sound like? What does his voice sound like? For those of us that know Richard Quest. Okay, so his, his voice is, um, is a bit unique. And um, mm -hmm. for me, I think it's, um, it's more like a, a, comic, <laughs> a comic voice. <laughs> I like that. I like that. But you know, that voice, he uses it to the best of his ability. He uses it to, he uses it to draw people. You want to listen to that voice. Despite that, the, the fact that his voice is not like uh, Pastor Adeboye's voice, his voice is not that loud. His voice is like rasping. That's the kind of voice you say is rasping. But he uses it very well. He's very talented with his voice. And so that's a reason why somebody might just find himself in journalism. Maybe because he even has a flaw in his, uh, in his uh, physiology. They will, they will say, okay, because of this flaw, because of this special, special thing, um, you should come and be a journalist. It happens a lot in sports. Not so many people wanted to be in sports. There's a guy, the, the tallest basketballer ever, is a Sudanese, Manut Ball. He only came into basketball because he was very tall. Um, over seven feet, well over seven feet. It's taller than the Shaquille O'Neal of this world, taller than Hakim Olajuwon. He was the tallest basketballer of the time. And even till today, nobody has been taller. So because of that, you know, he became a basketballer. So you could have a particular unique talent that draws you into um, that particular industry. And uh, another thing I wrote here is the heritage. Maybe your parents were journalists. Somehow because of that, you became journalists. Yeah. Your parents were in the business. Um, it was just the reason, it happens a lot in the movie industry, um, where it, as a matter of fact, it also helped those particular actors or actresses to achieve success in that endeavor. So it's something that you just, like a legacy from your parents. And then another reason why you may want to go there is because of the money or because you could make extra money uh, in addition to what you are already making. So there is absolutely nothing wrong in that. If it will earn you uh, a, a income, that's where you just want to earn your income. But beyond that, you know, for some other people, they just somehow found themselves in journalism. Uh, you know, when I entered the university the first time, that was in 1991, I actually wanted to read pharmacy in 1991 then. But the competition was very stiff. And um, you know how it works in Nigeria. And uh, because I didn't make it then, I, did, I was not prepared to go and sit another year and and uh, start writing the exam again. So there was an opportunity for me in building. So I took it, I started it, and I and I completed it. So, you know, it's it, it just like a routine. I, I just found myself there, um, or I found a job relating uh, to it. So it it's, it's another reason why somebody may be in journalism compared to somebody who has talent, somebody who has passion, somebody who has a flair, somebody who right from the um, childhood because the parents were there, it, become, it became an heritage. So the reason why you are there is the reason why you will either be a passerby there or you will be unforgettable there. Now, let me ask you now, because I said I will be as much uh, interactive as possible. Give me some of the unforgettable names that you've come across in uh, the journalism industry. Can you give me some of the unforgettable names there? Good 
water. Okay, anybody that has anything to say, just indicate by raising your hand and you stop. The people that just, you saw them, you fell in love with them on air. I mean, they just caught your fancy. You can never forget them. Maybe you are even modeling your own career after them. So who are some of those people? Can you mention them? Good morning, sir. I'll start. Good morning. I'll start, sir. Yes, I'll start. Yes, I'll start. So there are basically like three people. Okay. The, the first one is um, um, Sammy Wajia. Okay. The second is Peter Drury. Peter Drury, the comment, football yes. commentator. Okay. Yes, sir. And the third is Dan Thomas of ESPN. Ooh. Dan Thomas, Dan Thomas of ESPN. Okay. So these are yes. the people that you found to be unforgettable. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, Mac McDonald, you are raising up your hand. Yes, yes, sir. Um, I have a, uh, the person I have in my mind is Truman Nolly. Who? Hello? Truman yeah. Nolly. Who did you make? Sorry, I, there's a background Sorry? noise here. I didn't get you. I didn't get your. I have two man Nolly. I have two man Nolly. Okay, maybe you can type the name. Hello? You can type the name. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. That's Clara. Can you type the name? Can I go on? Okay. Go ahead, okay, go then. ahead, go ahead. Samai. Mine has always been um, Sam Wedge and, uh, and the Rhyme Master Chuma Nogi. And um, these two, two people alone is, is just good enough for me. I will not talk about those ones I have listened to abroad. They are good. So, those people always, so, you always love them. Which program? Oh, what, what was the area of specialty? Uh, Chuma Nogi. He's, he's strictly on sports, sir. Okay, sports, okay. Yeah, that in... was back in 2013. I was when I started listening to them. There were about five of them, but I specifically love Chuman Noli and uh, Sammy Weji, and they, they, okay. they always show passion in them whenever they're speaking. You always try to, you know, listen. Okay. You know, that is something really, really good about the two that every other person would love to, All right. to have. W wonderful. Yeah. Esha, I can see your hand up. Uh, that, that's, that's Esha, just finished talking. Okay, okay, Esha, you are the one that, okay, after McDonald, all right. So, the, but there are also passerbys. I mean, uh, you know, in the area, I mean, they, they didn't make impact. So, I don't want you to be that kind of people. And I'm sure you don't want to be that kind of people. I mean, they just came, they saw, but they never conquered. So you must be the kind of people that, in Italian, they will say "veni, vedi, vici." I came, I saw, I conquered. You, you pass through the system; the system pass, passes through you. You are able to cut a large chunk of the audience for yourself. They don't want to miss your program. There are people who want to also model their careers after you, and that's why you have to go. You have to dig deeper than the ordinary person. That's probably why you are under this mentoring program uh, organized by, by Sami. So you must be an unforgettable journalist. Have that at the back of your mind that you do a presentation. People want to quote you. People want to refer to you. People want to copy you. That's the idea behind um, what you do. So at the end of the day, you have chosen a career for yourself where you'll be unforgettable. Um, in that career, there are various areas, there are various sections, which we'll talk about, but let's see, what are those things that will make you unforgettable? I've already spoken about them to some extent, your talent, like the voice, like the voice, they will make you unforgettable. Um, I don't know whether you have heard of this man, um, he's, he's a Zambian, 
I think he has passed away too, but his son, like I mentioned the issue of heritage earlier on, his son is also a sport journalist today. Um, I'm trying to remember his name. His name just came to me now. Um, uh, Zambia is a commentator in football. You, you can never forget that voice. Uh, the voice can be dramatic. The voice can sound like uh, it's crying at times. Uh, he, he, you know, he ran a commentary when Zambia played uh, Nigeria in the 1994 African Cup of Nations finals. Uh, he ran the commentary at that particular time. And um, there was also a time, you know, th there was this plane crash that killed the, the national team of Zambia. That was in 1992, uh, 1992. So when they came back, they now raised another national team and uh, they played a match. He was also at the commentary. You know, it was, you just want to listen to that voice. You used to listen to him on BBC back in the day. So your voice is very, very important. So go and do feedbacks on your voice. Like pretend as if you are presenting amongst yourself in this group. I'm sure you have a group like this. So give yourself tasks, assignments, okay? Give yourself scripts. It's part of the things that we also set you apart. And then present it. And let other people critique what you have done. Let them talk about your voice. Is your voice clear? Do you have any speech impairments that you need to work on? I hope you are listening to me. Hello. Yeah, we are, we are, we are listening. We are listening, sir. Okay. Yes, yes, so, yes, sir. We are listening to you. For instance, in, in my part of um, Nigeria, there are some people who cannot call SH very well. SH. So if they want to call George, they are likely to say something like sauce because their tongue, the tongue, their mother tongue has affected the way they call church. So they have to correct that. Some people uh, cannot call R, the letter R or the letter L very well. They have to work hard to correct that. At the same time too, the accent, the accent must be corrected. Zain Asha said something that it was very difficult for her getting a job in the US because of her British accent. But I think she improved a lot on it to remove it. The every British accent, because she was born in Britain, she grew up a bit in Nigeria. Uh, she went to, I think, Oxford University or thereabout. And then she went to America to look for a job. And so the, the, the first job that she got was to be a receptionist. And one day, while working at that job as a receptionist, the, the job that she was actually looking for, they invited people to, for interview. And she was the one that was serving those people drinks. You know, how painful, how that must have been for her, that the job that she was looking for, they invited people, but she was not there. And she said one of the things that was counting against her was a heavy British accent but you know you have to work on such thing so in nigeria we have our various accents that will not make us fly we have to work on it i read something about the broadcast journalist of bbc you know also in england they have various accents they have cockney accent they have the scouser accent they have the Mancunia accent. Mancunia are, are those people from Manchester. Scousers are those people from Merseyside. Cockney is London accent. But when you want to be a broadcaster in BBC, you have to use a studio accent. You cannot use any of those heavy accents to be a broadcaster. So your voice must be distinct. Most voice must be suiting. Most your voice must be clear your voice must be almost accentless to carry people along so that they can hear and understand you uh, very well. Those are the kind of things that 
endeared me to uh, journalism. I grew up listening to BBC a lot when I was very young, right from 4 a.m. in the morning in those days. I want to listen to the world news, Focus on Africa. Uh, no, Focus on Africa was in the evening. Network Africa was in the morning. You know, a lot of Nigerians were there too. I mean, as part of the broadcast journalists, Ghanaians and all that. But I mean, I could hear them very well. So because maybe they had worked on their voice. Another aspect of the talent is your writing skills. Um, as a matter of fact, it's very important that when you're broadcasting, whether on TV or on radio, you should use a script. You should use a script. So if there is no script writer for you, if you're not casting the news, which somebody must have read or somebody must have edited, um, you have to develop your own script. And it's very key as well. Your, your scripts will carry people along. Don't write an ordinary, ordinary script. Don't write a, a script full of cliches. You should be able to coin words for yourself. You should be able to have maybe like a, a sign off language. Uh, there is somebody here in this, our locality, anytime he wants to finish his program, he said, I'm done and I'm gone. Uh, there is somebody who has a way of saying, goodbye. I mean, everybody knows him for that. But don't go on air and begin to say, um, 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 uh, um, uh, you know, you know, you know. A script will help you take care of that. Don't ad lib too much. It's good to ad lib, it's good to say something from the top of our heads and that, but don't ad lib too much so that all the cliches we go, all the um, 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 will be reduced to the barest minimum. Please write good scripts. Um, let me tell you a little bit about myself. You know, when I, I told you about how I used to read newspapers when I was very young, it helped me a lot. It helped me a lot to develop my writing skills. And then the internet came and I delved into what you call screenwriting screenwriting. So I read a lot, I mean, online resources. I downloaded a lot of, you know, all these movies that we watch. I downloaded them just to know how they wrote um, all those screen, uh, all the scripts that were behind the movies. So it helped me to develop that. I've written one. I want to sell it. <laughs> I'm looking for somebody to, to buy it, you know, I'm just saying that you can learn a lot of these things. Download materials on script writing, attend webinars, uh, podcasts, and all that, just to develop that uh, writing ability because your script matters, whether you are working in the print media or whether you are working in the um, electronic media or whether you have a social media uh, outlet, your script matters. That is one of those things that will make you unforgettable. And then another thing that will make you unforgettable is you must have an eye for the arts, the arts that you are involved in. You must be able to see what others don't see. You must be able to innovate what others will not innovate, create what others will not cre create. It may mean that you need to think deep, you need to think a lot, you need to do a lot of reflection. You need to um, go and watch over uh, what you have done, do a review. So the photography or the recording of this film, you know, what cinematographers do in movies to create um, a very good um, panoram panoramic view to create a scenery that at the end of the day, you know, uh, every year, the Academy of Motion Pictures, they give an award for the best cinematography. You know, the, the way the film was shot, the, the way the camera pans, and uh, how they capture the background. Whether, in your, whether you are doing film production, a studio production, uh, music video, or uh, other live action, you must have an eye 
for that act. You must see something that others wouldn't uh, see. So you must begin to do something that will bring about a revolution in the industry. Um, let me give an example. You know, in this part of the world, we do a lot of copying. But, you know, for instance, people will sit down to cast news. But these days, what are they doing? They are standing up. And a lot of people are copying that thing. Whose idea was it that when you are casting news, when you are presenting a program, you should stand up? It looked trendy. It looked very nice. And, you know, at a time when you want to speak with somebody, you have to be there to speak with him in person. But these days, you will see them splitting the screen to speak with somebody. You know, we, we, when I presented that business program that I told you about, uh, we had a regular analyst on that program who spoke about business, spoke about stock market, spoke about the things that are trending in, in business world. But on very few occasions, was he available to speak in person with the presenter of the program? And what we used to do then, was that I was the one that wrote the scripts. I will give the questions to the, the presenter of the program. She will ask the question, we will record it. And then when the man now gets available, the analyst, I, in those days we used to use some um, uh, computer applications to split the screen. That was when CNN also started this, all this uh, screen splitting. So it would be like the presenter and the analyst, they were in different places talking together and you will never know that they were not talking uh, with each other at that particular time. They recorded it at different times. Each one just did his own recording and then we merged everything uh, together. So your ability to do all those things will bring about a revolution. And you know, the funny thing was that as soon as we started doing that, some other people also started uh, copying us. As a matter of fact, we had a bank then that was sponsoring our program, Sky Bank, now Polaris Bank. They were the ones uh, sponsoring the program uh, on air then. And we had it, I think we ran it for two years uh, back uh, in the day. That was 2001, 2002. So your, your calling into this vocation must fulfill a purpose. So regardless of any other thing, there must be a purpose for which you are in this revolution. Uh, let me quote the late Miles Monroe. He said something, some things about purpose, very well renowned for his teaching on purpose. He said, until purpose is discovered, we'll never find the reason for our existence and discover the most important things for our lives. We must discover the purpose why are you in journalism? Because you are there to fulfill a purpose. So purpose is the reason why you were made. Purpose is the reason why you exist. Purpose is the desired result expected from you. It is the reason why God created you. So God wanted you to fill a particular void. God wanted you to do something. That's why You are in journalism. That's why whatever you do there, you will forever remain unforgettable. If you don't answer that calling, you are not going to be happy. You are not going to be fulfilled. You know, there is something that is called job satisfaction. It will not be about the money that you earn. It will not be about where you work. It will not be about position, but you will just be happy that you are doing what you, purpose in your life supports. So, you have to make a choice between a lot of money, but no fulfillment, and not so much money, but absolute fulfillment. Before we go to the next thing, any questions so far? Do we want to ask any question about the calling? And I want to know that yes. you are still there with me. Yes, yeah, sir, we are still here with you, sir. Um, I don't know if anyone has a question, just indicate by raising up your hands as usual. 
Okay, it appears there is no question. So let's go to another aspect of it. You have to zero in. In the medical profession, how many areas of medical profession do you know? Let's start with Olisa. How many areas of medical? Can you just mention one area of medical profession? Um, the cardiologist. Cardiologist, that is the heart. Anne, what about you? Anne, are you there with us? Aisha, what about you? McDonald, which area of medical protection do you know? Michael. Okay, uh, yes. Hello, I'm with you. Yes, who is speaking? Hello? Uh, who, whose voice is that? It's McDonald somewhere. Okay, somewhere. So which McDonald's area of somewhere. medical uh, which area of medical profession do you know? Just mention one. Okay, I know gynecologist. Uh, gynecology is it? Is it a professional medium? Hello? Hello, hello, I can hear you. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, um, that artist, is it? Um, I think it's part of uh, medical um, a profession. Okay, okay. Therapy, but it will depend uh, on this therapy. Yeah. Okay, okay. What about yeah, Michael? Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, uh. Michael, what about you? Michael Ebenezer. Hey, Jiro, I've not heard your voice. Please, please, if your background is noisy, do not um, omit your mic. You can text. Thank you. Hey, Jiro, are you with us? Okay, sir, you can see? Okay. Hey, Jiro. Hear me, sir. Uh, you just give us one area. I said gynecology. Time. Okay, gynecology. Okay, Mike, Mike Cookie, are you with us? Dentist. Okay, dentistry, very good. So, for instance, in my own um, major, which is uh, building, you can also do so many things. You can zero in. Uh, let me give you the example of a colleague of mine. He went to South Africa uh, for greener pastures. So he attended a job interview. While he was in Nigeria, he's been doing everything. Jack of all trades. You know, that's often what we do in Nigeria. We don't specialize. So when he got to South Africa, they said, okay, we want to give you a job. But which area have you specialized on? Ah, he said the question confused him because he, has, he had never specialized on any area. So they, in, luckily for him, the interviewer helped him somehow. He said, is this setting out? Is it roofing? Is it maintenance? So he said that he remember that he has done a lot of maintenance work. So he said maintenance. So, and that was where they gave him job. And of all the jobs that he had done in South Africa, he had always been given jobs in maintenance. So you have to zero in too. You cannot be a jack of all trade, or else you will not be a master of one. So um, for instance, you could decide to be in news and current affairs. So it means that you may be a news caster. Give me an example of somebody who is prominent in news and current affairs in Nigeria now. Can you give me an example? All over Nigeria. Okay, sir. Um, there's a journalist by name Baba Jide Otituju. Baba, I think I've heard that name. I don't know. I don't know where he works, but I've heard that name before. What um, see TVC communication. Okay, TVC communication. How many of us have heard of um, Chamberlain Uso? How many of us have heard of Chamberlain Uso? Huh? What? Yes, I've heard him. 
Okay, what about Sheung or Kimbaloye? Of Channels TV, yes, sir. Okay, which program does he present? Politics Today. Aha, very, that's a man that watches channels very well. And I'm sure you watch that Politics Today every now and then. So, mm -hmm. you know, he, the thing is that those people, they have carved a niche for them in what they do. You will not see Chen Walking Walo presenting sports. Have you seen him present sports before? No, sir. Okay, that's because he has zeroed in on news and current affairs. And as a matter of fact, within that news and current affairs, he has actually focused on politics. So that's what he does. That's where he has made his name now. Some other people will go for features and documentaries. Features and documentaries. They will travel distances. They don't present in the studio to go and shoot documentaries, to interview people. They do a lot of research and all that. Some other people is script writing and editing. That news that was so wonderfully delivered by um, people on TV, like that what he told you, you may just, somebody wrote it and then another person edited it. You may never see those people on screen, but they are doing excellently well in that area where they have zeroed in. And there, there are those people who are in the production crew too. They're in the production crew. They ensure that everything, the picture, the colors, the lighting, everything goes very well. They are the one that bind every member of the team together. In the movie industry, they said some people are above the line. Those are the actors. Those are the um, actresses, the people who have cameos, the people who are the major actors. And then there are those who are below the line. Those are the people who handle the production, who are handle the cameras, the cinematography, and um, the script supervision and all that. And then there are people who are purely into public relations and advertisements. Um, they work with companies, they release press statements, they engage the public, uh, they are publicists. They, they don't work in television stations, but they have a lot of connection in television stations so that when they want to release news item about their principal into the public, they already have that network. There are people who are into sports. I want to believe that there are so many of you who want to be sports journalists here. Am I right? Yes, sir. You want to be sports journalist, okay? So when you want to be sports journalist, you go strictly into sports journalist. You focus on it because it will take a lot of your time. I have discovered that, you know, sports is like a school where you never graduate. You continue to grow in it. I've been watching sports since I was very young and I'm, I still continue to learn a lot of things in sport as a pundit myself because there are so many sports. A lot of people can talk on just um, a few sports, but there are also people who can talk on so many sporting activities. I attend a program every week here um, in Akure, and we talk about almost every sport, especially the one that catches the fancy of people. So we talk about lawn tennis, you talk about boxing, you talk about UFC, you talk about basketball, uh, and then the one that everybody likes, football. So you continue to learn a lot of things. But also to within that sport, just like we said about Shane Walking Baluye, that is zeroed in on politics within current affairs, you can actually zero in on a particular spot, like somebody mentioned Peter Drury earlier on, who has zeroed in on football commentary, purely football commentary. So uh, in, in those days when I used to listen to BBC, there was one journalist that I really liked there. Uh, like I mentioned, unforgettable journalist is one guy, his name uh, is Mike Costello. He's still with BBC. He was very fantastic with boxing and athletics. He, well, anytime there was a big fight in Las Vegas or New York, the BBC always sent him to go and cover 
that fight, his scripting was always unique. All I mean, he puts um, a humorous aspect to his scripting. He described one man, a boxer, one day. The boxer normally had um, a very thick mustache. So when he described him, he said his mustache could cover the handlebars of a Harley Davidson. You know, you just want to listen to that scripting. When I, the 1996 Atlanta Olympic Games, I couldn't watch it. I think I was in school then, but it was his commentary that I used to follow what was happening uh, in athletics. So that's sports journalism. It has its own way of scripting. It has its own way of delivery and all that. There are people who are into entertainment and style. Um, they just want to talk about Hollywood, Nollywood, Bollywood. They want to talk about um, what is the latest thing in the world of design. There are people who undo business, business talk like Quest, Richard Quest that we mentioned on. That was where uh, Zin Hasha started her career. Uh, talking business, talking about stock market, talking about all manner of terms that had to do with it. Um, you know, they would say Dow Jones average. They would say the FX, um, whatever, Nikkei average. And then there are people who are just print journalists. They are not into broadcast. Not everybody will go into broadcast journalism and not everybody will go into print, but they prefer print because they are better at writing. They don't have a flair for screen. They don't have a flair for speaking, but they are excellent writers. And then there are those people who are into the entrepreneurship in journalism and management. Unfortunately, in Nigeria, um, we do not develop uh, that area of entrepreneurship. One man that did that was Sonny Obazu Ojagbasi. Have we heard that name before? How many of us have heard of Sonny or Bazoo or Jagbasi before? Are you still with me? Yes, I've heard of him. Um, okay. Sports, I think that's his uh, colleague. Exactly, exactly. He has just passed away. He was, I think he was 70, 71 or thereabout. Um, he was, um, he, he developed that area. He started as a sport writer, but by the time he got into entrepreneurship, he was not even writing, he was just managing. For instance, um, in Nigeria, when you begin to grow up in a ladder, they will now turn you to an administrator, but it's not really necessary. Look at this man, um, Wolf Blitzer. You know him on CNN? You know Wolf Blitzer on CNN? Are you with me, House? Does anybody know Wolf Blazer? Yes, sir. I, I, I know of uh, Wolf Blazer. He's a presenter on oh. CNN. Yes, he presents news program. He's about 70 years old. But in Nigeria, by the time you get to that level, you will have retired. Then number two, they will have turned you into an administrator. And so all your knowledge, all your experience will now be lost. But elsewhere, they don't do like that. You continue in that line. Somebody else will have specialized in managing the business of journalism. Somebody else will have specialized in managing, say, a hospital. They, the course they read, the, what they majored in it is in hospital management. So they, they are not doctors. They don't treat people. They don't give injections, but they manage the hospital environment. And so in journalism, somebody should also be managing, I mean, the station, the outlets. The person is not the, a script writer, is not a presenter, is not a pre producer, but is an administrator. So you could want to zero in, or when you start your own business, your own newspaper, your own FM station, you want to be the one who is managing the business. Now let's look at, to close, your to-do list, because our time is going. What do you need to do? You need to start. Start, and I believe you have, you have started. Um, you start small. You start small, but you start all the same. Why you have started, dream big, but start small. So do what you can do at a time. Don't bite more than 
you can chew. Don't put too many ions into the fire. Begin to do it bit by bit, and then your big dreams will come to pass. Then um, somebody said that keep your handkerchief neat, and then you can be trusted with a bigger cloth. If you can't manage a few minutes, you are likely to waste 24 hours, no matter how many times it's given to you. So if on the program, they give you five minutes to present entertainment, to give us spot news, manage that five minutes very well. I can assure you that five minutes will eventually grow to 10 minutes and it may lead to a major program that everyone wants to listen to. So manage that little area that you have been given very well so that you can be given and be trusted with a uh, bigger upload. Number two on your to-do list is learn. I've mentioned some things about it. Improve your diction, your use of English. Continue to read and read and read. Do a lot of things. You have too many resources on the internet pronunciation how many of us are aware that you can use google to improve your pronunciation have you ever used it before yes sir yes i have how many of us are yeah, doing right now okay so you can use yeah everybody is doing it right now okay that's very good you can use google to improve your pronunciation it will give you the american pronunciation it will give you the british pronunciation and then when you do that you continue to practice just pretend like you are presenting on air so that you get used to that program that you want to do on your own present it to yourself present that program to yourself so um so that you learn in that process you improve your diction go and look at some of these people that we have mentioned look at their on-screen persona how they sat, how they had um, eye contact with the camera and all that, how they use the teleprompter. Please learn, learn, continue to learn. How they interviewed uh, people, like Christian Amampo is always interviewing people. Mr. Prime Minister, you're welcome to the show and, and all that. Learn. Now pretend like you are the one interviewing Mr. President. Pretend like the one that you are interviewing the Minister for Sports and, you know, improve your diction, improve your pronunciation, improve your uh, on-screen persona uh, or your, your whole AP uh, character and all that. Your most unhappy customers are your greatest source of learning. Bill Gates said that. So they are the people who will criticize you. They are the people that your program did not make happy. So when they are not happy, you will do what? You will improve um, on your next presentation. So don't assume that everybody is happy with your presentation. Um, you know, when we are doing our presentation here, if we don't talk about football enough, some people are not happy. And, you know, the system, they want us to talk about local football, but the people who want to listen, they want to hear about European football all the time. I mean, who, how many people in Nigeria actually give uh, a damn about the local football because of the way it is run. But they want to hear about their clubs in Europe. They want to hear about Chelsea, about Liverpool, about Real Madrid, about Manchester United and all that. So you have to give them uh, what they want, but you also have to reconcile in the fact that there has to be a local content. You have to make it interesting uh, for them. Maybe you do a quiz for them on local football, let them answer. And, uh, you know, it, it gives them some personal kind of satisfaction. So in doing your learning, you have to count the cost of learning because at times you will pay to learn and uh, you pay the price, but you will get the value of learning. None of us is the alpha or omega of anything. So we must learn by watching. We must learn by listening. We must learn by reading. We watch the more experienced people. We watch those who have gone ahead of us, we watch how they did their presentation. Those people that you want to model your career after, those people that you have deemed unforgettable, watch them. Listen to the people who are your audience. Listen to them. Listen to what they are saying. Get feedback. 
then read, 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 and read. Go and download materials on your uh, subject of topic and read. Don't stop learning. A time will come when your dreams will go global. You that you are today, wherever you are in your locality, um, like Colin Udo used to be like you at the time, but he's someone that you know is on ESPN now. And then when you now look back, what will happen? You will laugh at yourself. How local you were then, how horrible you were in your production, that you will see things that, oh my God, I used to present like this now. I mean, in those days, five, 10 years back, you will laugh at yourself, oh my God, see how horrible I was. But you improved because you learned something, because you watched, because you listened, and because you read. Then, endure. You are in the wilderness. The wilderness is not always so friendly. You know, in the Bible, the children of Israel, they passed through the wilderness, 600,000 of them. Only two people survived. And I'm hoping that you'll be the few, one of the people that will survive by the grace of God. So it's a wilderness where you are in. The wilderness swallows some people, but there are some people who come out of the wilderness and they are like champions too. So you will have to endure failures. If you fail at a task, endure it. Don't let it put you down. Don't because of that failure, now give up on your big dream and say you are no longer doing again. No, you will learn from that failure. Most successful people is because they learn on the, uh, from the failure. And then you must also endure the success. The fact that you succeeded at something small today does not mean that you have reached the peak. You know, we always say that um, the sky is always the limit or heaven is always a limit. There's always a room to for improvement. There's always a room to increase higher. So success gets at some people and they became overconfident. Uh, they became um, complacent and they never improved anymore. So whether you failed or whether you succeed, endure it, please move on to the next level. Try as much as possible to reinvent yourself. Try as much as possible to learn new things and make sure you endure till the very, very end. Um, whichever time you want to finish your career, continue to endure, continue to renew, re-energize yourself. Um, Perseus, one of those Greek uh, mythologies or Greek... Um, uh, in ancient Greek history, he said, the person who conquers is the person who endures. So you have to keep on trying. At trying times, you don't stop trying. During trying times, don't stop trying. Try again. The road to success is always under construction. So it may be rough. You know the thing about rough road and very good road is that more accidents happen on good roads. But on rough roads, accidents don't happen. The car can break down there, but you don't rush. When you travel rough road, you will still get home. People who just travel the good roads, they are the ones who normally don't get home because they become overconfident, because they can't endure the success. So you must endure the success, and you must endure the failure, and you must endure to the very end. One man, Og Mandino, he said, I will love the light for it shows me the way, yet I will endure the darkness because it shows me the star. May you all become uh, stars. Let's look at one last one, network. Scientifically, it has been proven that the most successful people are those people who rely heavily on the power of networking. I'm, I'm happy that you have begun something like that. You help each other. You synergize um, in one way or the other where you can fill the void for another person. Where somebody does not have capacity, you bring in capacity. Where you don't have capacity, somebody bring uh, capacity for you. So the most successful people in the world are those who um, network. Do you know that Facebook just started as a group of people networking who were just sharing pictures on a university campus. 
Mark Zuckerberg and people, they were just sharing pictures. And look at what it became, just that networking. As a matter of fact, internet was not designed to be the internet that we have today. It was just another university um, tool for exchanging information then. They called it Appanet. That was what it was. But see what it has become today. It was not intended to be internet that we have today, but the power of networking is limitless. The power of networking is limitless. There is a scripture in the Bible where God said to those people that built the Tower of Babel, those people that network together, he said, nothing will be restrained from them to do because of the unity with which they were working, because of that network that they had created. So the most successful people, like you are going to be very successful journalists, but you have to have a network. You must have a network. So Zig Ziglar, um, a famous motivational speaker said, you can have everything in life you want if you will just help enough other people get what they want. So it is a symbiotic relationship. It is a give and take relationship. You give somebody, you get from somebody. If you don't give, if somebody asks for help from you, and you are not able to render help in this particular business, please help me fill in this particular area. Please borrow me a little bit of your capacity. You are not also going to get that capacity. You are not going to get that particular information that you need. So you can have everything if you can give other people what they want. So look at another saying. He said, I like this one. He said, instead of better glasses, your network gives you better eyes. Can you imagine that? Instead of better glasses, the network of people around you that you have, they give you better eyes. And who are the people in your network, your fellow professionals, like those of you in this, um, in this group that we are talking about, they are um, in your network, your mentors, your mentors, who can send you on errands? Who can ask you, please help me write this particular story? That story may not eventually be credited to you at the end of the day. But what you will get back in return will be more than what you invested in that story. That particular mentor may help you get a job opportunity, may mention your name somewhere that you least expected, but will be highly beneficial. So if they are in your network, you must have mentors. Very, very important. Uh, one day you will just attend the interview and you will discover that the person or um, among the panel of interview, they are your mentors. So have them, you may have to um, serve them, but you will get something greater in return. And your audience, they are also part of your ment uh, network, your audience. You get feedback from them. They will they will probably tell you even things that professionals won't tell you. They are the ones who will let you know whether you are capturing uh, their imagination, their fancy, their interest uh, uh, eventually. And then two more on that list, you must tell the truth. If you are not going to tell the truth as a journalist, you have no business in the profession at all. The, the business of journalism is about the truth. Now, I know the business of journalism is also about bias. For instance, if you're a Chelsea fan and you want to report what happened against Real Madrid, there is a way which you must report it. But you must tell the truth. In Nigeria, it is either APC or PDP. You want to report um, PDP in the nation newspaper, knowing full way that the nation newspaper is APC. You have to find a way of telling the truth. The truth must be spoken uh, regardless of any kind of uh, situation. So you must tell the truth. The truth will win you the public. There's a radio station in Akure now. It is the most popular radio station because they don't give a damn about anybody. They just, they cover everybody, they speak the truth. So people listen more to them. So if you are not going to be speaking the truth, you, are, you don't have any business in the profession. Um, Michael Jackson, 
the popular Michael Jackson. I'm sure everyone has heard of Michael Jackson. He said, lies, they run sprints, but truth runs marathons. So what will make you have longevity in journalism is the way you write your truth. And look at it. So many people now, they are in their 50s, in their 60s, going to 70s, and they are still very much relevant to the profession of journalism. That's because they tell the truth. Uh, somebody said that fake news is cheap to produce. Genuine journalism is expensive. But if you want to go and buy, you want to, I mean, invest in cheap production, fake news, like they do on social media today, somebody just thinks about something and puts it on uh, online at no cost. It's like you want to pay peanuts and you get monkeys. But genuine journalism can be very, very sacrificial. Yeah. Expensive, but is the way to go. And lastly now, the God factor. The God factor in everything that we do. There are always extracurricular factors in everything. For instance, Nigerian factor. Guys, we all know, we, we won't spend time talking about that. It's extracurricular. Somehow, somehow there is a Nigerian factor. So there will also always be the God factor. So think about the God factor. Think about how God can help you. Because the race is not always to the swift, and the battle is not often won by the strong. It is not of him that wills, it is not of him that runs, but it is of God that shows mercy. Thank you very much for listening to me. So I don't know if there are Thank any you questions. so much. Thank you so much, sir. It's very, very, very insightful lecture. Uh, if anyone has a question, indicate by raising up your hands. There seems to be no <clears throat> questions. Yeah, um, there is actually no question because he has been very clear in his uh, teaching. So I thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. The pleasure is all mine. It's been nice um, uh, discussing with um, like minds like you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so thank you so much, sir. I, it's been incredible. You you, you have like you have taken over an hour with us, and that is a very huge privilege. Um, I want to say a very big thank you on behalf of the whole students of the Next Media Star Program or Initiative. Um, we have been a very 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 good lecturer today, and we really appreciate this. Come on, come on, guys! A round of applause for our lecturer. A round of applause, please. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. I feel so much honored. Thank you, everybody. I'm so much honored. Thank you. So I can we sorry, sir. Is it possible we get your social media um, handles if if you don't mind, sir? Just in case. I think the class captain also mentioned that before. Ah, uh, well, I don't have oh my social media handle. Yes, sir. Well, I I only do WhatsApp and Facebook. I'm not on Twitter. Uh, because of time, I intentionally do not want to be on Twitter. I don't even have enough time for WhatsApp and Facebook. <laughs> so it's just in my name, Olubumi Akishimola. Um, so, but um, I hardly do social media. Maybe at times when I want to publicize my books and, and all that, that's when I do um, social media stuff like that. Um, but I just comment generally on things on Facebook, um, and just mainly Facebook. I don't. I hardly even put things on my status on um, on uh, on WhatsApp. But when I want to do my books, I use all the other channels like Amazon, like Kimbo, like Take a Lot, and all that. Uh, that's what I just use. But I'm on radio. 
every Sunday, Crest FM is on Radio Garden. We do spot analysis on Radio Garden. Um, Crest FM is on Radio Garden because you may not be in Accra and get the station. So that's how, how you can just easily get to. Thank you so much, sir. So uh, is there any last thing you want to say to us? Any brief thing you want to say to us before you leave? Um, well, it's been a pleasure talking with you. I, I just hope that in the future, I'll be hearing your names on the big channels, uh, the big outlets that you guys, you made it big time. You become the, the authority, the voice, the one everybody wants to listen to. And um, I have the number of, of this now. I'm actually expecting any moment from now. It's an ebook, book up moments. It's, it will come out any moment from now. I have in, intentionally targeted it to come out just before this World Cup. So, but it's still in e format. I'll put it in my status and also get uh, Olisa to know about it when um, the time is right. So it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for listening. It's our pleasure, sir. A very big pleasure, sir.